I'm Ben. I'm sorry. If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the filthy capitalist option. It's sorry says. 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of Alliance. You don't have to be part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times, and then get matched down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com, and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon, and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive you review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is the community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. <laughs> the alliances hang out on Discord. Shh. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash Finn and Sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 here and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buy our merch. Buy our merch, indeed. And a child shall lead them. Okay, guys, we've got a uh, stream, uh, 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 a DJ stream from the big homie. Controller of minds as you see up there if you dear listener would like to know how to be a DJ. Well, uh, we'll let you know at some other point uh, Having said that the first song in this all review right. Let me just read his uh, his little thing here The first three are all songs from albums that ended up on my top 25. Well, this is his first stream ever by himself so these are this is his overall information first three songs are all songs from albums that ended up in my top 25 album list in 2021 the winner you've already reacted to ghosts of atlantis third pillar the fourth and the last one is a special uh in that i dedicate it to my late grandfather father's father who died five years ago at the age of 96 Whew, 96 old was his moon his circle complete there is, however, an overarching theme throughout all the songs. Perhaps you'll figure it out. It is also the reason for my chosen logo, the attachment. I've been careful about selecting only non-official videos. Uh, okay. <laughs> Message me the logo. Uh, I, I shall. I actually, uh, I shall, if I uh, see it here. Okay, and we have all the lyrics do you have the lyrics on the thing I'm a jiggy? No, I couldn't find. He might have sent it to to me just now. Oh yeah, here's the here it is. Here it is. Not the lyrics, but the uh, the picture. <laughs> That's so funny. All right, guys. So when you become a DJ, you can you. There's so many things that you can choose. Don't worry about that. I got the picture. I'm I'm in I'm in his thing. So when you become a DJ, you get your nifty little picture. Well, that didn't work. I have to download it. You get your you get your nifty little picture on the side that represents what the stream is about for you. Whoa, that's a pretty intricate. That is so cool. The passage of time, it looks like. Yep. I really got to focus on these lyrics. Did you get the uh, Did you get the lyrics down? Let's see if he sent them. He sent a new message, so perhaps. Perhaps. Here, click on lyrics. Okay, I got him. Okay, so the first song is Solitarian by Shade Crown. And we've got the song right here. Wait, no, it wasn't supposed to be Solitarian. Or the, the Awakening, I'm sorry. Yeah. The Awakening. The Awakening by the Bad Shade Crown. Let's go. Spooky.
Okay. strong opening yep. from DJ Controller yep. of Minds. No um so this is this is that you know like European melodic death metal with a you know with some synth on top of it mm -hmm. which which I I like synth if it's like if it's like salt like use sparingly which they did they used it sparingly they didn't make it it's not like you know, like too much synth. I think I feel like it's techno with guitars, whereas this one was metal with synth. Yeah, and that's what I like because yep. I like the metal shit. Very <laughs> strong chuggy riff. Yep. And the riff that followed the course 
was, you know, I was looking at the comment section. People were saying, man, this is a sad song. I mean, obviously, you can see the lyrics right there. So, um, yeah, lyrically, it's it's uh, it's a sad thing to, to behold. But then when you when you the 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 riff on the course, you know, was minor key. <clears throat> it was minor key and it was sad, but it was fast paced. So it was kind of like. You don't stay in depression kind of thing. Mm. Very, very interesting. Um, these guys are from Finland. Um, and these guys rock, man. A very, very strong, strong opening. Very strong opening. Um, I thought... What did you think, I sonically? The, uh, so, oh, sonically, it was very interesting. His uh, his vocal style took a little bit for me to get used to. Um, but then once... I guess once... I was I had moved into the understanding of how where the the direction of the song was going then everything kind of just fell into place like even at the beginning when he said I despise myself right now but there's nothing I can do it didn't feel like it like rhymed with anything and so yeah. I was like what's happening here and yeah. but then as the song continued on like sometimes maybe it's intentional maybe it's not but the way that that like it wasn't really rhyming or the the vocal style and stuff but then once you get into what the song's about it's like well you know what that all makes sense whether or not he planned it or not that you would do the song the that song way that the thing is i'm not sure english is these guys' first language probably not which is <laughs> always one of the craziest things to me is is that you know when you when you speak the dominant world language you know what i'm saying like you you don't really appreciate how amazing it is one that people can speak your language mm -hmm. and two people can sing your language actually singing is actually probably easier than, than speaking the language because yeah. you have the music to kind of help you yep but to make music when it's not your first language holy smokes okay <laughs> so lyrically so again it's a you very know, relatable song i think i i, I kind of i'm kind of proud of myself because i picked up on this you see there's like time there's mm -hmm. like a clock and then there's like a highway mm -hmm. <clears throat> i wonder if controller made this himself or if he saw this on a on a whatever you call it but either way we were just in an escape Looks like room. an album cover we were, <laughs> yeah, a, with we, we were in an escape room in which we did horribly and uh it was about the passage of time and things like that we really did. um so uh, but so it reminded song, me of that. This song had the passage of time as part of it. Um, but it's that, you know, that focusing on once again, I'm tormented by these poisonous, poisonous thoughts by a thousand shadows that lurk in the deep in the ocean of mistrust. I want to disappear. I despise myself right now, but there is nothing I can do. It has taken control. Never wanted it to be this way. I have lost myself again. Forgotten sorrows, anger, and despair. Suddenly I recall it all too well. Silenced echoes of a past life. I've lost myself again. This, when this song was going on, I honestly, there's a, there's a certain homeless person that, you know, I see around town and I wonder, you know, like a lot of, they have stories, you know? Where were they? What led them to this situation? And, yeah. you know, sometimes things are out of their control, but sometimes things are in your control and you made decisions to put you in the situation that you're in. And then there's the whole regret that, that goes along with that. And when he said, forgotten sorrows, anger and despair, I suddenly I recall it all right too there. well. Yeah. That's what it reminded me of. Like, you and I have this, this <laughs> kind of running conversation where... You say nothing takes you by surprise because it's always in your mind. Like sad things that have happened in your past or think whatever, like it's there. So nobody surprises you. Like trigger words don't trigger you because you, it, you don't push something and not think about it. Yeah. Where I'm not like that. I'll push something so far from my, my direct consciousness that something will happen and all of a sudden it reminds me of that. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And it can, you know, that can be its own. Well... The thing is, is that, you know, and we were we were watching this again yesterday, is that the brain, the mind, whatever you want to call it, which to be, at this point, I don't even know what anything is anymore, to be, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, but from my vantage point, it seems that your mind does that already. Pushes stuff? Yeah, like you don't remember everything that happened in the, in, when you were no. like five. No, no. 
Um, and and you I don't, don't remember barely anything. And nobody remembers all the trauma that they felt in their life, um, right? At once either. Right. So I was listening to this to this um, this guy on Christian radio one time, and he was saying these these horrible moments would pop up in his in his mind like, from his past, and he was saying, "Well, it didn't happen yesterday, and it didn't happen the day before." Um, so why did it all of a sudden randomly pop up? And he was saying, that's because God wants me to deal with this specific fragment of this specific painful period in my life. And so he said, oh, okay, well, now it's time to deal with that thing. So my point is, your mind or whatever <laughs> that we think consciousness is already suppresses that stuff. And then it'll bring it up to you, you know, in pieces for you to deal with it in pieces so when we actively try to suppress that, it the mind is like, yo, I already did that. And now it's time for you to actually, you know, engage with it and deal with it and engage with God with it. You know, it's kind of similar to what you were seeing in that Jordan Peterson clip where Peterson was talking about. I was literally just going to bring him up. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sid. I, well, he we're had, probably talking about the same thing. Uh, he was saying something. Well, I was I stopped thinking about what I was going to think about so I could hear what you were saying. So go ahead. Well, it's like. Where do these thoughts come oh, from? I do remember. He Go ahead. said he was talking about how you know like that there's a part of your consciousness that knows what you need to move from the per the current place that you've kind of found yourself stuck in. You yourself know how to move from that place, but sometimes we're unwilling to do what needs to be done. And so there might be something that kind of just keeps popping up and he was saying like this thought comes out of nowhere but he couldn't really understand where the thought comes from is it like a portion of yourself sometimes your own thoughts surprise you why does this happen and um you know he kind of threw out some answer of what he thought it was but the idea that you so kind of know the void. yeah <laughs> that's one way of explaining it which <laughs> i completely understand yeah, yeah yeah why he would come up with that but that you know you know there's a certain thing that 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 i feel that to for me to get I think you, you're either on a journey of getting more healthy or getting more sick. You're, it's one or the other. And there's one thing that I feel like is the next step on me like growing. And for some reason, it's not a very difficult thing. But I keep finding myself refusing to do this one simple thing. And so today I was like, for whatever reason, I keep avoiding this. I'm not going to avoid it. And instead I went in and did this thing. And I'm like, now I have to consistently do this thing and create a new habit about this thing. But he, he's just saying like that you kind of know. And obviously as Christians, we believe that God is kind of whispering that into the consciousness of people of what, you know, what you need to do to, to move forward. And I don't even know if that's true in all cases that people know. Um, or maybe you have this thought to get help or to call, you know, maybe it's something like that. I don't know if people, what do you think about that? Do you think that people, I don't know how bad off bad can get because I know that when I've been in a he said once again I'm tormented I know when I've been in a place where I feel tormented I kind of think I I did know if I'm honest with myself one thing that I could have been doing at least to help myself out but I, do you think that's true of everybody do you think everybody kind of has an idea or no no I, I I don't think everybody has an idea um I don't have an idea most of the time so you know I I, I don't <laughs> sarcast in the house uh, it's not about running from the mind. It's about letting the impulses pass. It's to not the mind lead you, but to lead the direction that your thoughts take. Yeah, I, I think I think there's a lot of I think there's a lot of truth in that. You know, I think a lot of it though is this thing pops up in your head, and there's really no explanation for it. Because, like I said, negative or positive thing. Well, negative or positive, like a memory pops up in your head yeah. that surprises you. You weren't thinking about it. You were, you know, I don't know, making eggs for breakfast, and then boom, this thing pops in your head. We've all experienced this phenomena, and you know, we don't need to get into the scientific minutia of why that happens because there's really no explanation for it. You just have to, okay, what do you do with it, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so. Those thoughts automatically carry with it that emotional baggage, that emotional memory, mm -hmm. especially if it's a negative one. And then you got to decide what you're going to do with that. And a lot of us immediately, because we're so trained in the Western world to always be comfortable and comfort equals good and discomfort equals bad, thought pops into our head and whatever 
the universe, God, your 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 primary self and your second self, whatever you want to call it, is trying to tell you it's time to deal with this little fragment of trauma. Mm. We're trained anytime that you feel pain or any type of suffering, get out of there. Mm. And so we suppress it. And what I'm saying is your mind has already suppressed that for you because your mind knew that you couldn't deal with it at that time. Mm -hmm. I'm just using mind as a placeholder. Whatever that mysterious mechanism is that yesterday didn't make you think about that thing that happened when you were five uh, versus today, now all of a sudden it's flashed into your head. Mm -hmm. That's because your mind said, okay, they can't deal with it yesterday. But now you can deal with it, so deal with it. But then you suppress it, and now you're in this fight with this, you're a fractured person because you're one part of your consciousness is trying to bring it to the forefront. Wow. Another part of your consciousness is trying to suppress it. Your other consciousness is saying, yeah, but we've we've already suppressed this. Like That's why you, you haven't been thinking about this 24-7. But now, because you've aimed yourself at fighting this, this memory or whatever that means, now you're never going to get better. And now it's going to be the thing that you're obsessed about. Because if I say, you know, don't think about the pink elephant... And you tell yourself, I'm not going to think about the pink elephant. I'm not going to think about the pink elephant. Then that's the only thing you're going to think about. And I think that's a lot of the reasons why a lot of us, I mean, I'm no doctor, but I think it's a reason a lot of us can't get over those things. And the other thing about trauma is sometimes you traumatize yourself by the bad things that you've done. So mm -hmm. you've done, let's say you did something and you completely screwed up a relationship and then, you know, and you know that those negative reactions from your significant other or your friends or whatever are because of something that you did. Um, and instead of dealing with that, when that pops up, boom, mm -hmm. you're, you're going you're gonna to push it away. And it, it, it puts you in a never-ending cycle. You're never going to get out of it in that, from that perspective, I think. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what, what do you think about when your mind, like I think that there's times where your mind kind of brings like one thing, but then your mind sometimes will just keep like basically piling on you this 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 this, and then you almost feel like you're gonna have a breakdown yeah 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 and and you know for me you know like i've always said you know our worldview is is uh extremely convenient because when you look at if you look at the lyrics this guy's tortured a lot of it is by the things that he's done as well and when he says past lives I don't, I, I don't think he's necessarily talking about past lives in like a Buddhist sense or something like that. Sarcast is in the house and so maybe... Did he say lives? Out. Where? I see uh, life. Silenced echoes of a past life. Yeah, or a past life. Uh, it's the same thing. Like, I don't I don't think he means it in like the literal sense. Oh, but, yeah. No, I didn't think so but either. There are epics or periods in your life where you're like, oh, that's when... You know, for us, it was, oh, we used to call it by where we lived because we moved around so much. It's like, that was the gantry era. That was the... You know, that was the country gardens era, whatever, whatever. You have periods of your life where, like, this was your life, but now your life is completely different. And sometimes that change is good. But in this song, um, it seems that the change isn't wasn't necessarily the best in the sense of what he wanted. He It looks like he lost something, which then generated a bunch of distrust because he talked about mm -hmm. mistrust, distrust in the song. And now all this stuff is beneath the surface. Mm -hmm. And I think... The author of the song has been constantly suppressing it. And the way that he's dealing with it now is through the music. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Which is why you get a lot of artists who they say, look, mind or God or universe, whatever you want to say. I can't deal with this by myself. I'm going to channel it through music. Mm -hmm. And the music helps to, to face those things like head on. And then when you get on stage and your fans shoot it back to you, you go, okay, I'm not alone in this. I'm not the only one that's dealing with it. And so it becomes something that's really cathartic if you can master that situation and find some way to make peace with it. Especially if you're the one who screwed something up. Yeah. You got to find a way to make peace with yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously for us, it's like, well, uh, you, you were born that way. And so you, you were born to screw up. So if you screw up, don't be too hard on yourself. You know, give yourself a little bit of uh, leeway. Give yourself a little bit of grace because you were born to screw up and that's all you were going to do. So be a little bit nicer to yourself and then ask for help in getting better. Um, that's our, you know, that's our kind mm -hmm. of framework. You, you know, we have this yep. sort of 
insulation and fail safe from our from our mistakes. I do think you can get there even without a Christian worldview, but obviously Christian worldview is massively convenient. Yeah, it makes it easier. <laughs> yeah, it's very, very convenient. When he says, I'm still the one you know, is he talking to himself or someone else? I think maybe he did something to someone that kind of he maybe betrayed them. Yeah, that's kind of what and I was And you know how people, they're like, I don't even know who you are anymore. And yep. he's like, well, I'm still the same guy. I just made a mistake type of thing. Well, he saying? said, I'm still the one you know, but something wicked lives inside of me. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, you know, this has been a running theme all the time. It's like, I'm still the guy you know. I'm still a good guy, but there's something inside of me that's that's wicked. And and that's the, expl- you know, Paul says it this way. It's not, I, you know, if I do what I do not want to do, it's no longer I who do it, but sin living in me. And so, so Paul actually disassociates himself so much from his sinful nature that he says, it's not even me doing yeah. it. When he says it's not me doing it, what he's saying is, that is not my ultimate and, and, and complete design or, or will. Mm-hmm. If I could, I would be a perfect person. Mm-hmm. So it's this principle of sin living in me that's, that's making me do this. And he's saying... Look, I'm a, I'm a, uh, you know, the guy that you fell in love with or the friend that you fell in love with, because we fall in love with our friends. Um, I'm that guy. It's just, there's also something in me that, that, that caused me to do this. And now you don't trust me anymore and all the rest of it. Um, I think it's a very, very honest song. It's deep. It's really, really deep. It's a good song. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you give it? You go first. Uh, this song is a solid, this is a really, you know, it's like the, the albums or, uh, when you, uh, <laughs> when you go to a rock show, they always got to start off with like a, a good banging song to get the crowd up. So I feel like this is no, this is no different. 9.8. Oh, wow. 9.15 for me. Shout out to Delaney. All right, dear listener. We got another song coming your way. Sit tight. Be patient. If you're in uh, YouTube world, uh, don't worry about it. We'll check you again at, you know, 11 or 3 p.m. EST Eastern Standard Time. Haven't said that there, listener. Then out. Sorry, out. Gone.